Hello, and welcome to Baron's Drift School. Lesson 1, a set of Corsa. In this episode, I'm going to teach you the basics of drifting, in case you don't already know them. I'm going to give you what you need to start drifting in a set of Corsa. And from my experience, you might already be thinking this is quite an early tutorial to be coming out on this, considering I've only had it for a couple of days. This is within the first week. But as you've seen from my first thoughts video, if you hopefully have seen that, progression in learning how to drift in this game is, isn't that hard. It shouldn't be something to be feared. It just takes a little bit of practice, a decent car, and a few tweaks. As it stands right now, there aren't many cars to pick in a set of Corsa because it's so early on on the PS4 version. So I'm going to be doing the BMW E30 Drift, and it's the most popular drift car online for obvious reasons. It's very easy to drift, and with a little bit of tweaking to the setup, you can really push it. And here is my setup. I'll give it to you, apply it to your own car, but first off, you might want to skip this if you're a wheel user, but if you're a joypad user, I'm going to go on to my joypad settings. So you can see what I'm using. Now the layout isn't very important. What is more important is this. Feel free to copy my settings. These aren't going to be the most perfect settings, but for me so far in the early days, it's working pretty well. So if you want to use them, feel free. They might work for you. So first off, after you've set up your steering wheel, it, the only best way I can say it, or your joypad, if you haven't got, you've got a setup already for it, is to just take out a car, try sliding with it, and seeing how it feels. How it feels on that full angle when you're going very sideways, and is it quick enough the steering for you, is it all, you know, because you never know, to your own preference. So what we're going to do is go over to the BMW section, we're going to grab the car, if I can see it, I'm guessing it's to the left. Uh, yes you are, bottom left, the BMW M3 E30 Drift Edition. We're going to be having that, we'll, I'll pick a livery just because I'm that sort of person. We'll have the Y1, because it looks quite tidy, plus it's not as JDM-y, I suppose. Even though it can't be very JDM, can it? It's freaking German. Change track, we're going to go to the obvious one. Ah, which I don't think it actually, does it let you in this mode? Because if you know about my first thoughts video, this is not... Yeah. Ah, this might be a problem. Ah. Right. For this tutorial purposes, I might have edited this down, but just to give you a quick message. Um, because I can't drive it anywhere I want, I was going to take it on the drift track, because that's a great place to start learning. That's really where I recommend you start. So, I think I have no choice but to go online. So this is going to be the first ever tutorial I've ever made for this channel where I've had to do the tutorial online. So what we're going to do is because I'm just going to prove this point right now. This is The servers might have been fixed by the time you see this. But the main problem is now, if I go to track, drift, which is the drift track, I know it's a very creative name. So if I go to the top one, I go to the top lobby, click continue, and as you can see, there's only so many of each cars and there is none of the car that I want to actually do in this tutorial. So this is going to be the problem. So what we're going to have to do is find an empty lobby. Oh, uh, well, you're going to have to do. Uh, just hopefully just, we don't get in the way of other people. And I can't pick the colour of it because reasons. <sighs> right. So as it turns out, you might have to practice online. That might be a bit of an issue. But you can practice on other tracks if you want to. But this is my best advice for the short term is find yourself an empty lobby, grab yourself this car, and I'm going to show you the setup. So what you're going to need to do is, by the way, once you've done this setup, you're going to need to save it, give it a name, and pop it in here somewhere. The one I'm using is Drift version 1.2. I give it a very boring name because I am a boring person, generally. Speaking of general, I kept uh, stock fuel setup because it's perfectly fine, and it's good for a good 80 laps, I would have thought, of the drift track from my, from my little mini circuit, what I do. The aero is completely stock setup. It doesn't need to be changed, it's perfectly fine. Drivetrain cannot touch, unfortunately. Criticised that in the first thoughts video. Suspension. The stock tyres that came on were the Street ST. I have not actually believe it comes with semi slick stock, I believe. But we're going to be using the Street 90s just because less grip, more fun. Tire pressures have been tweaked a little bit. I find that if you go any higher than that at the rear, you just don't get that control at the extreme angles. So it's a very good, happy level to be at. It's a little bit higher than what it was, and a little bit lower front tire pressures, just to get rid of a little bit of understeer. Dampers, once again, just a few little tweaks, nothing too major, just some slight improvements. Once you've got all these settings, make sure you've saved them, give them a name, 
and every time you go and join a, a session or I think it's the same in single player as well you have to click on the setup you want and load it, it won't automatically save the setup that you last used from my experience so far so if you're lucky enough to find yourself this car find yourself a track to do it on we are ready to go we're gonna hop in I'll be using bonnet view I do apologize <coughs> but it's the view I choose to drift with it's just it's almost cheating in a way because you get a central view of the car you get a better sense of the weight shift so you won't see everything but I'll try and use different camera later on now I'll point one of the big major things out before we even get started this game has a very strange characteristic I already pointed out in the first thoughts video once again which is you can't put too much steering angles too much steering lock on at the same time so for example I'm doing it now nice and gently to turn out of there but if I try and turn but if I do it too sharp that's full angle to the right and you see how it just locks up and it just squeals it just you can't do it you have to be very progressive with your steering and that's how you manage to turn the car successfully on, on hard lock so do that's gonna take a while to drill into you for me it took almost uh, about eight hours maybe six to eight hours before my my brain managed to reset itself to deal with that fact I mean there are a lot of little nuances with this cat with this uh, with this physics engine now if you don't already know the basic techniques of drifting I'm gonna be using just a couple of them in this episode just a simple, easy to get used to techniques to get you started in this game. Now what I'm going to do, if you come onto this drift track and you head down here on the map, you will find a little mini roundabout. Now as cute as it looks, and it looks like a ferris wheel or something, something from a circus or a carnival, we're going to be using this just so, if you've never tried this before, we're just going to do a donut. I think even games like Pro Street used to do this to teach you to do this. You're going to do a donut around it. I'm going to choose second. You can choose first if you like, but I like second. It's a bit more of a challenge. And what you want the challenge is to do is to keep the steering lock on full opposite lock. So I'm holding it all the way to the right. I'm using just the throttle to put the car where I want it. And you just want to see if you can hug it. And then once you've got used to that, it could take you a few minutes. I don't know. Everyone varies. But just push it wide and just push it wider and wider until you can balance it and put it where you want it now throttle control is going to be the key to that and putting too much steering angle will also kill that it's doing it progressively as I've already said but that would be a great way to get started because that kind of deals with both of the issues Once you feel a bit, if you feel a bit more confident you want to skip that stage or you just want to move on to the next stage we're going to start doing the little mini circuit I haven't given it a name and I don't, I'm not aware if it has a name already but we're going to do this little mini circuit that I have uh, been doing for the last couple of days. We start from here. Now this isn't the usual speed. You've got to understand, this game is very similar to Project Cars in a way. Sorry about resembling that game. I know people are going to get annoyed with me if I keep doing that. But you have to warm up your tyres. So these tyres, they are set up for when you've got the full heat. So you won't feel full benefit and you won't get into the, the, the sweet spot of the setup until you do a couple of laps so in this case it's usually two or three laps of this mini circuit which I'm driving around now I'm going to show you the route and if you do two or three laps of this at quite reasonable speed doing some drifts you'll get your tyres up to temperature I do like to go near that wall <laughs> so this is more of the line you normally take but because I haven't quite got the tyres up to temperature as you see there in third it just kind of bogs down so I'm just, I'm just going to talk you through how you're going to get this car prepared and then we'll talk you through the techniques, what you're going to need. I do apologise about all the little pop-ups and stuff. I cannot do anything about that. This is an online server. <laughs> and I will edit some of this out because I don't want to take all day in this. I wouldn't like to take up too much of your time. But as you can see, just a couple of nice simple lines. Get that heat into the back tyres and especially the front people sometimes forget about that your front tire heat is just as important as the rear you need to have it balanced from front to rear by the way if you if you do want to know because I'm sure there's people out there thinking I'm still doing my warm-up by the way just in case you're wondering <laughs> uh, the reason why I'm not using the interior view which I normally use in games is because this reason yeah yeah th that's really off-putting so yeah we will stick to bonnet view I do apologize now back to the tutorial <laughs> it's nice to have a horn just give people friendly beeps when you drift past and uh, whatnot. See, now the tyres are starting to get into temperature. You, that is really the section there, that transition will tell you if your tyres are up to temperature. 
Because if you're doing it the same technique I am, the same amount of throttle, in the same gear, you should be able to tell just from that one transition on that one corner. Yeah, it's really starting to get to where it wants to be. Right, so we're going to start the lap. Now, as you can see, it's quite a bit of preparation to get started for this, but it'll all be worth it in the end. This is saving you a lot of time for later. So what we're going to do is set off nice and gently. We're going to wait for this kind of person to hopefully get out of the way. Can I... Yep, he's going that way, lovely. Friendly beat. <laughs> this corner, what we're going to come into is in third gear. We're going to transition and let the back end out. Fully on the brakes there, on the foot brakes. Already on full opposite lock. And now I'm just sort of easing off full opposite lock when I want to get more angle. So you're not going back to turning the right way. So say for example, in that last corner, I didn't carry on turning right to get more angle. I just let it come off the opposite lock. Uh-oh, don't come this way. <laughs> this is the problem with online servers. How you doing? Look, I ain't got time to tandem. I'm doing a tutorial. Can you? Thank you. <laughs> right. I do apologize. There's going to be a lot of that. I'm going to have to do a lot of editing in this. If you, So yeah, if there's a lot of editing, you know why. So we're back on here, this corner again. Second. Full opposite lock, and I want to get a bit more angle, so I've let off. Now I'm back on the steering. And just keep the power on, because the more you keep the power on, you can keep the drift going, the more heat you get into the tyres. Here, we're just letting it go. I'm on sort of half opposite lock. I'm going more onto full. Onto the foot brakes. Avoid the guy in red. Down to second, just so I don't hit him. Pump it back into third. Power out. All the time, shuffling the wheel. Feeling the angle. Full on the brakes. Tug on the handbrake. Now, it looks like a lot of angle, but it's completely holdable. Into third, just to push it wide. It's a classic technique from old episodes of Baron's Drift School. If you want to extend your drift coming out of a corner, as long as you've got the power and the torque to do so, shift up a gear, and you will be able to extend the drift to that longer angle. And if you need to shorten it, just do the opposite. Tap on the foot brakes or hold on the handbrake to keep the angle. And just drop a gear, and you should narrow the angle down of the drift and get it around the desired corner. So here I can just hug it a little bit tighter if I want, get more angle. Now I'm going to kick it into third and it just washes it wide and I'm just balancing that opposite lock to keep the angle that I want. Because there are no sway bar modifications currently in this game as I record this tutorial, I can't stop the wobble of the car. So to make it look nicer from the outside to other people, to keep a really nice steady drift, you want to be steady on the steering angle so it doesn't look as wobbly when you're going past. That's the um, that's the goal in that little case. And here we're still holding the handbrake. Let go of it. I've got a guy right on my tail, which is uh, quite hard to worry about right now. <laughs> onto third. Power all the way. Going into straight. Now we're going back onto opposite lock. We're going to try and keep the drift going just a little bit. Wash it wide. And you have to keep it very gentle entry until someone hits you like that. Edit. One thing I do need to mention, I almost did forget as I'm doing this. To do your brake bias in the game, you can do it on the fly. So for me, it's up and down on my joypad, because I am using a joypad, of course, as I mentioned earlier. I run into, as you can see, I'll put it back there, it's 75% brake bias at the front. I find that's a pretty good brake bias just to not overly interrupt your angle during the drift. So I can hold the foot brake there, and then I've let go of it and put the power on. And it didn't really hinder my angle or affect it in any way. So I find that's a very nice sort of place to have it. Of course you can adjust it to your own style, but I always recommend having more towards the front. Because it gives you much more options when it comes to braking into corners, tucking in your drift light here where I've double tapped the front brake. And then I can power it out. And now as you see as the tide's starting to get up to temperature, the back end will keep going in third. I'll slow down and let these two have their pirouetting. Lovely ballet there chaps. Now we're in third, kind of, yeah, now we're on full throttle. We're going to tap the brakes just a bit there just to slow it down. We're going to go back into third so we can power it back up. Rather than keeping it in third and it kind of bogs down just a bit, we're going to just full throttle, full throttle, still full. Now we're going to go full on the foot brake, holding the handbrake there. The handbrake is quite nice to use in this game in situations where you just want to slow down your car slightly but more maintain the angle that you've got now of course at any point you can freestyle around the track if you wish to do so i mean end of the day it doesn't matter what corners you drift i just recommend this track because i've already done around 400 to 500 laps of this circuit which i'm driving right now over the last couple of days which sounds like a hell of a lot but it isn't really 
I'm just dedicated to learning. And that's what you need to be if you want to get good at drifting. I mean, right now, I'm not doing it full justice. I'm just kind of half concentrating on the drifting because I need to concentrate on getting across the things you need to know. But at the same time, it's just constant managing the steering and the throttle. I'm not using any special techniques here. You don't need to be fancy in any way. Now, if we want to go show you some more aggressive techniques, I'm going to get some extra speed into this corner. We're going to see how close we can get to the wall, and I'll show you how I do it. Very gentle. It's already the back end's already stepped out. Now I'm just getting that throttle, and I'll push it wide. And I could have got a little bit closer. I'll say there's about a good foot of clearance there. And then just run it wide so the rear tyres kiss the grass. Now this is... To give you some idea how long it's going to take you to get to this point of precision, it's going to take you a good couple of days if you're an average sort of learner, if that's the sort of speed you learn things, especially when it comes to the physics engines in different racing games and different car games. Because I will say the drifting in this game it way exceeds the fun I get from the racing in it. The, f the racing is bloody fun. But the racing community, as you can see, and I will say this, I need to make a, a full video on this, is just how good the drifting community are. They really are courteous, they're polite, there is no really intended ramming at any stage. You do get the occasional clown, but nothing that's out of the ordinary. Now, into this corner. Second gear again. Isn't, you're going to notice I'm going to keep using the same technique here. Because it is the perfect technique to take for it. You're just keeping it drifting constantly, and then you're back off here. Just give it a minute, bit of handbrake there, just to sort of stall it all a little bit. And then a bit on the foot brake, just so we can slow it down and hug that apex. I missed my gear there, I do apologise, meant to change it to third a bit sooner. Got a bit more angle than I wanted there on the transition on the exit. Holding the handbrake full on. I did hold the foot brake just a little bit for the last second, just to slow down the extra bit of speed. Full opposite lock, all the way from halfway through the corner. It is a very easy car to drift this, even with the stock setup. This setup just kind of helps with this sort of technique. I just find it does, generally speaking. Now, we're going to get a bit closer to this wall. Get more angle. Really there. I should have held the handbrake just to stall it a bit longer because I kind of had to let off the opposite lock just for a, he a little second just so I didn't cut the track. We're going to hold the handbrake again. Full opposite lock from when I started the handbrake. And it really is that simple. I didn't want this episode to be too long. There's not many techniques you need to know in this lesson. I will do more advanced ones in the future as more cars come out. And we unlock the custom server so I can be more flexible in what cars we can use in different situations. Good afternoon, sir. And uh, yes, I do hope you have a good time with this car. It's very nice. It's not the hardest thing to drift in the world. Just give it practice. Follow those steps, as I said. Number one, get your controller or steering wheel set up to a comfortable place where it can handle the steering angle and the movement you're going to need and the feedback that you need. And get that set up onto it. If you feel like you need to adjust it anywhere, feel free, of course. There's no harm in doing so. And if this technique doesn't work for you, just keep going at it. Just keep practicing. It is the easiest technique. It's a simple power over most of the time. The, you don't have to hold the handbrake. Like you, It's not a necessary part of the drift. But the key things such as changing upper gear to extend your drift, managing that opposite lock, it's all just feel. Don't slam on too much steering lock too soon. Do it progressively. Like here, when I slam onto full opposite lock, I'm not actually slamming it. I'm doing it progressively. I'm moving my thumb very slowly on my analog. And with a steering wheel, that'll be much easier to do, of course. You'll be an advantage there. So as I tandem with this lovely guy who's taken an awkward line so I had to hold the handbrake. I hope you have fun with this car because this is a is now currently the number one drift game on PS4. If you're looking for a place to drift this is the place to do it. The community on the drifting side is lovely. The tracks will hopefully keep coming and the flexibility of the servers and where you can take your car to drift. It's a great game. The learning curve isn't too steep. Friendly beep. I love you all as always. I'll see you in the next video, for now, goodbye. Oh, and the tandems are going, the tandems are going, I can't see him, oh he's gone off, oh dear.
Don't worry, Lesson 2 will be coming out soon. Hopefully that will help you more, Mr. Red BMW. Am I rhyming today? Am I- I've turned into a poet tonight. Fucking didn't know it. Ah.